Hello traders and welcome to the Trading Fanatic channel. It's Ilya here and as always I'm super happy to have you here and here we are with another educational video on supply and demand. In this video I'm gonna show you how I personally utilize supply and demand in my trading, how I identify it, how I trade it, how I draw it and what exactly is supply and demand, right? Because for me it's really important to actually teach you what is the psychology behind supply and demand like why does it work how does it form what is the psychology and why why is there supply and demand right so in this video i'm gonna we're gonna first go through some theory i'm gonna explain some things i'm gonna provide you some examples some textbook examples and then of course we're gonna jump onto the charts so i can show you some actionable insights both on the higher time frames and then how you can utilize it also on the lower time frames because you know supply and demand exists from the monthly or even the yearly all the way to the 15 seconds right it is everywhere all right so i really hope at the end of this video you're gonna learn a lot of things and you're gonna walk away with some great knowledge right if you're new to this channel it's all about trading i share my weekly outlook and setups every saturday and once per week i'm sharing an educational piece of content or a trade breakdown video so make sure you're subscribed turn the notification bell on and if you already did let's jump straight into the video Right, let's get started so first of all I'm gonna start with some basic and what exactly is supply and demand so according to mr. Richard Wyckoff huge kudos to that guy for coming up with all those concepts in the early years the law of supply and demand determines the price direction and of course supply and demand does not only exist in trading right it's a major principle in economics and business basically supply and demand is everywhere and this is what drives price of goods services and uh, everything else all right so it's very simple. The concept of supply and demand is very simple. It's one of his uh, laws. If the demand is greater than the supply, the price will rise. And if the supply is greater than demand, the price will fall. It's that simple, all right? And if there is a balance or equi equilibrium between supply and demand, the price will just consolidate. It will reach equilibrium. And this is really important also to understand because when there are not enough buyers or sellers or they're just exchanging like orders at the same place at the same time at the same price, the market will usually consolidate. And as you have a consolidation, that is when the market actually accumulates for a potential move outside. So it's really important to spot when the market is balanced, all right? Because when you usually see consolidation or choppy price or just clear ranges, that is when the guys are exchanging the orders and are potentially kind of negotiating where the market can potentially go, all right? Supply and demand is mainly controlled by big financial institutions, all right? We as retail traders with our... Yeah, 10 lot trades, we cannot do anything, right? Uh, we do not have enough buying power to move the price. So what our aim is to identify when and where the big guys are buying and selling and just simply try to follow them, all right? It sounds easy, but it's definitely not, all right? They are always leaving some footprints for us to read. And in this video, I'm going to show you actually how to read them. But of course, they make it hard for us to see because if it was that easy, then of course, everybody will be a millionaire. An important detail to note is that the banks also cannot place their positions all at once, right? So imagine you yourself right now going to the bank and saying, hello guys, I want to deposit 100 million. And they're going to be like, what? Where? How, like, how do you get this money? Like, is it uh, tax free? Do you pay blah, 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 blah. You cannot just do this. So what they do is they break those positions, those big positions down into small chunks, which is usually done within a consolidation, as I told you, when the market is in equilibrium. So at that place, a lot of manipulation takes place in such areas. So it's really important to spot that. And of course, furthermore, uh, if they cannot launch all of their orders at that same place, they're going to let the market move away. So this is when you have that first push outside of the range. And of course, they're going to come back again at the same range because that is where they initially put their orders. So they want to buy again or sell again from that zone. And this is why you're always going to have retests of those supply and demand areas. And that is simply the psychology behind. All right. First, they're at equilibrium. They stack their orders. Then they push the market away. And then if they want to continue further buying or selling, they're going to drive the market down or up towards that same level. And then they're going to launch new orders. And simply, this is how also structure uh, is created. So, of course, we're going to jump onto the charts and have some real examples of that. But this is just a little introduction to supply and demand. Let's see how to actually spot supply and demand zones. And in this little 
uh, kind of slide right there. I'm going to give you a couple of rules, right? You can read through them, but it's very important to, uh, uh, from a move, a move, that the move from that zone or consolidation to be sharp and fast, all right? Because this leaves a footprint. This simply means that the banks have launched their orders from that place, right? Usually before uh, the move, you will have an accumulation or consolidation period and then a stop hunt. We're going to have a lot of examples of that later. And a supply and demand zone could be either a single candle or a series of consolidating candles. It depends on the time frame and there are numerous ways to draw uh, supply and demand. Okay, we have the so-called ICT order blocks. We have uh, just simple ranges. We have... Uh, yeah, many other things. But what I told you, it's really important to actually understand the psychology behind. Why is this a demand? Okay. Second rule, which is also pretty important, it has to break some sort of structure, preferably even a swing structure. Okay. A creation of a new hard high or a lower low after that push outside of the zone is always preferred when identifying a supply and demand zone because that confirms to us the potential for higher or lower prices. So for example, simply if you have a new higher high, then of course what you expect is a higher low, right? And this higher low, we usually get created where initially the banks started that move for the new higher high. More on that a little bit later, right? And of course, uh, this is a little rule that I, that I always like to see. This kind of uh, gives a little bit more credibility to those zones. It needs to have a big sell before a buy. This is for a buy scenario or it needs to have a big buy before a sell for a potential sell scenario, all right? And this actually creates the manipulation which stops out traders and then fuels the move in their uh, direction, okay? So those are three simple rules that we're gonna explore a little bit later. Then let's give me, let me give you some tips. Always look for fresh supply and demand zones. If you're a day trader, you have new supply and demand zones created multiple times during the day. You just have to use the lower time frames. For really intraday trading, I would advise for you to use uh, the one hourly as your higher time frame and then drop to the lower ones like the five, the three, the 15 minute, where you're gonna constantly have new supply and demand zones. And it's all about following where the market consolidates and where it initiates out of. More on that again, a little bit later. Supply and demand zones in the hard time frame, which is 1H and above, work the best because simply the higher the time frame, the bigger that range, the bigger that consolidation period is going to be. And that means that more and more and more a big position of orders, a big position of orders, a big stack of orders were stacked at that place. All right. So if you spot such a hard time frame, uh, demand or supply right, you are guaranteed to have at least a reaction from that level. I'm going to speak more about reactions later because uh, you cannot just simply take each and every supply and demand zone and trade from it. Okay. Usually, as I said, if you spot it right, you're going to have a, a pullback or a little reversal. But if you are trading within the trend, it, the market is always going to continue with the overall trend. All right. Avoid trading zones that have already been tapped into. OK, so uh, that means that the orders are already taken. So if the market returns back there, it will most likely give you again a little reaction and then it just will break through the zone. OK, so look for fresh zones that are freshly created and haven't been retested still. OK, and of course, always, always, always understand the underlying trend. You might have an amazing supply zone, as I told you, but if the market has changed structure to bullish and it's coming from a strong demand from the downside, then the supply that you spot it and that you try to sell from is just going to be a reaction point. OK, so you're going to have where's my mouse? You're going to have the market moving up, tapping into supply, then it just pulling back to create a higher low and then potentially continuing up. I really wish to have a drawing tool right now, but I don't. So I'm going to show you a little bit later. All right. So make sure to take note of those rules after you watch the whole video, return back to them. And I'm going to show you how you actually can spot those levels and how you can actually utilize those rules as well. A very important point, how to draw supply and demand zones. There are numerous ways to draw them. All right. Personally, I use two ways. You can either just draw a box embracing the whole range, that consolidation period that I spoke about, right? So you just take the whole of it. Or you find the last bearish or bullish candle and embrace it with a box, okay? And this is basically the so-called order block. That is like the last sell candle before a big buy, right? You can also take the last candle before the move occurred, right? So this is basically... Let's say, well, if you look at this example, there is the last sale candle before the move up, but this actually created this range, right? But as you can see, 
this is the candle before the huge move to the upside so you can actually take this one right there there is your bearish candle that actually creates the range all right but the market exploded after those two indecision candles so you can actually take those little indecision candles as your demand zone right there what do we have the market created a big consolidation there is a big sell candle so there is your whole range but where did the move initiate from after this little bearish indecision candle that is when the momentum kicked in so that's how you can make your supply and demand zones a little bit smaller if we look right here there is your whole range there is your last buy candle before the sell move so this is uh the kind of the um, yeah we also call it refined as well if you want to but this is the whole range we push outside what do we do we have another big range but the move initiated after this little indecision candle right there so we can take it then the market returns we have again another range but where so you take the whole range like this you can see the market consolidating but where did the momentum kick in after this little indecision candle right there that's when we kicked all right and you just continue doing this over and over and as you can see the market perfectly reacts from all of those levels there is our uh, consolidation there is the manipulation up there's the sharp move to the downside the move started after this bullish candle right so there we go and we're having the reaction but as you can see still why is this going to be just a reaction? I'm just looking at this chart. And as you can see, we're coming from strong demand. The market is already changing the structure. We're having a little demand right there. The market tapped inside, strongly reacted. And personally for me, I think right now we're actually going for a hard high. So this supply is simply a reaction point, a pullback to potentially tap into this range or this range, and then to potentially initiate higher prices, okay? So those are two ways that you can draw supply and demand zones. Personally, I prefer the bigger one. I prefer to draw the whole range because as the market gets inside that range, let's see right here, as it gets inside the range, you can drop to a lower time frame, like the one minute, and you can search for entry opportunities. Okay, that's how I do it. But of course, if you want to look for those very little ones, they're also pretty fine. But most of the times you're going to get wicks. You can see on this one, we got a wick below the zone right there, but the demand was never broken. Okay, also this one, we had a spike, actually a couple of spikes above this little uh, supply, but the market never broke the high of the range, okay? So pretty, pretty, pretty important. And finally, let me show you how to actually trade from supply and demand zones. Like, as, as I told you already, the market has a fractal nature. So the setups and the patterns you see on the monthly will always repeat on the one minute and even the 15 seconds and even lower. It's all a matter of your preference and uh, kind of if you want to be an intraday trader, swing trader, day trader, whatever it is, that is how you actually determine your time frames. And I have videos on that as well. So make sure to watch all the educational videos. There are two types of entries. Uh, usually the one that I prefer is the conservative, but you have an aggressive. So there is your, of course, your range or your accumulation. There is your manipulation that actually creates that demand. And then we have a pump outside that also breaks structure. Okay. And then potentially the market pulls back. So you can just enter either from the range or from that level right there. And then you target a new hard high. And the second thing is exactly the same. You have again, the range, the manipulation, the push outside, the market slowly pulls back to create a higher low inside the demand. But as the market gets inside the demand, that's when you drop a time frame lower. Okay. And you look exactly for the same thing. You look for a downtrend, the market breaking the downtrend, breaking structure, creating a new hard high, and then just trading the higher low, okay? And usually you're gonna have the same pattern, this is on the hourly, you're gonna have the same pattern on the one minute. And I'm gonna show you this right now as well, all right? So I really hope everything is clear so far. If it's not, please make sure to drop a comment below so I can make maybe a follow-up video if, any, if something is not clear. But basically, yes, right now we're gonna jump onto the charts and we're gonna utilize those rules. And I'm gonna give you a couple of exercises that which you can do in order to spot supply and demand zones better. All right, we are at the charts right now, and this is EU on the full hourly time frame. So before we start, I just want to quickly mention that there are, for example, two ways that such a supply or demand level could form. You are going to have uh, some sort of a consolidation, then a sharp exit outside, okay? And then what you simply have to do is wait for the market to come inside and then to potentially react from it. And then usually the one that I prefer, it's one of the rules. It's kind of an optional rule, but I have it as a rule for myself, is to have a nice consolidation, but then you have something like this. OK, and what this does, it stops out the people that are looking for like for shorts there, for buys there. It, it gives them a nice push, which is basically that uh, manipulation period. And this makes this supply zone much more powerful. So as we come inside right there, we're definitely going to have a reaction. But basically, those are the two 
the two types of levels or zones that I use. Okay, one of them is just a simple consolidation and then seeing the market initiate outside of it. And then the other one is always with a stop hunt and then a potential continuation down. And then simply what you have to do is just wait for the pullback. You can also utilize FIPS or you can just set an order on the retest. It's super simple and very powerful. So let's jump onto the charts. And again, as you can see, first things first, okay, let's just, this is an exercise that I really want you to do right now. Uh, just go into your charts and try to spot those levels, okay? What do we have right there is a nice range, right? And then we just massively impose outside. So is this a valid supply? Oh, yes, it is. This is a very strong one. So if we come inside this level, we're definitely going to have a reaction, okay? Going a little bit on the left, what did the market did right there on top? It created a little consolidation, then very sharply impulse to the downside. And also what it did, so you can also spot this demand right there. Why is this a demand? Well, it's not a very clear one, but of course it's the market consolidating and pushing outside and also breaking structure. So is this a valid demand? Yes, it is. And as you can see, we had the reaction. The market consolidated for quite some time, but then we sharply exited outside and also broke the structure to the downside. So what this makes, this demand valid. Okay, so what the market did, did later is it pulled back perfectly inside. And how did it pull back? Do you spot? We have a nice consolidation, then we have a nice manipulation up, and then we have a breakdown to the downside. Okay, so this right now is a valid supply that is going to get retested. Just right here, we also have another little consolidation, which is possibly seen on the hourly, and we have a massive drop to the downside that also broke structure. So is this valid? It is. And as you can see, later it got perfectly retested. Let's carry on. Like again, what do we have right here? Where's my two? We have a nice consolidation. There is the manipulation up. Then we went back inside the range. Okay. But this is your manipulation. And then we simply continue to stack the orders and then we massively broke to the downside, also breaking structure. So is this whole supply zone valid? Yes, it is. So how you can draw it? Well, as I told you, oops, you can take the whole range. But what I usually do is I just look like for the last kind of range. So I'm going to draw it something like this. Okay. This is my supply. Then from here, you can draw it something like this as well. You can see the little candles, but they actually got faked. So it's always good to take as much as possible. You can even take them from here. This one, there is this one. You can also take it like this. There is the retest. This one, you can take it like this, right? Where did the momentum kick in? Right here after this kind of indecision candle. So if I actually take the indecision candle, it's even much better, okay? Have a look at the nice reaction. And this is how you basically spot those, okay? What about this one? Where is my tool? Have a look we have kind of a range we have manipulated down we continue to accumulate and then we exit it strongly we didn't really break structure we broke it right there but is this a valid demand yes it is but if i turn on the left you can see that it actually did not get too much respected simply because the market has changed the structure and this is why not every single supply and demand area is going to work okay if we're actually precise if you of course take the whole range you had the reaction okay so the orders from that demand were taken okay and this is one of the tips that i want to give you if this demand has already been tested don't trade it again okay we tested once we tested twice what did we create right here again we have the consolidation little manipulation push outside there is your retest so this held but it failed to continue higher which actually invalidates this setup okay and if we go all the way on the left you can spot those everywhere okay what do we have here? We have a consolidation. There is our manipulation. There is a massive push outside that also broke structure. There is your whole range. It got respected right there. Okay. How do we create this? We have a range. Ooh, I'm having my alerts. Okay, let it stop. So yes, how, how is this formed? We have a consolidation, we have a manipulation, and then we have a massive pump into the highs. Okay, so this again, is this valid? Yes, it is. But if we look on the left, it's actually, yes, it just gave us a little pullback from this zone and then we just melted to the downside, okay? So this is how you simply spot those zones on the flowery time frame. It's either a big range or uh, kind of one candle. So for example, right here, is this supply? Yes, it is. Because what did we create? If you really zoom in, you can see that the high of this wick was broken. So there is your manipulation. Like you have a little bit of a range. There is your manipulation above and then we have a massive drop lower. So basically right now, this is a very nice supply area that you can look for sales. Okay. And right now, let's drop to the hourly time frame. Let's see how you can actually trade this on the hourly. Let's see. So uh, th that is most recent price action on EU. It's not entirely clear, but there is that little range. Okay. There is the range. There is the massive pump outside. If I try to spot something on the left, you can see how always we create a consolidation that we have a massive pump outside and then also break of structure. 
So this this is actually a whole this whole thing is actually a supply area. Okay, and there is your last bullish candle. So if you drop it like this, there is your entry. Okay, there is another one like we have a big consolidation. The market massively pumps away from it, uh, breaks the high, and then breaks structure to the downside. So can you trade this? Yes, you can. There is your entry. If you go all the way on the left again, what you can see is again the market creating that consolidation, the manipulation down, a break to the downside. So is this valid? Yes, it is. And as you can see, the market got respected right there. So I want to jump more into the entries because I think this is what you mostly want to hear. Okay. So basically, what I do is I identify those supply and demand on the hourly, on the four hourly, whatever it is. And then as it gets inside the zone, what I do is I drop to the, let me actually give you a most a very recent example that I took. So basically what I was looking on EU is to take longs from those areas right there. And what I spotted from the bottom is that we had a consolidation, the market manipulated down, pushed up, manipulated again, and then we strongly impulse to the upside. So for me, this was a whole range that I wanted to, to trade from. Then I saw the market actually create a nice downtrend and came inside my level. So since there, I started looking for longs on EU. All right. And what I did is I simply dropped to the one minute. So let me show you how I utilize the one minute. Oops. So there is actually where it is. Yep. So there is actually this little what how you can use the one minute as well is to really zoom in to see how you can actually make those supply and demand zones as small as possible. What do we have right here? The market creating a range. There is your manipulation. There is your massive pump to the upside that also broke structure to the upside. So is this valid? Yes, it is. And if we drop it like this, the whole zone, and if we drag it to the left like this, there is where the market tapped right there. And after this tap, I'm only looking for longs. So what happens later? Okay, we just continue following price. What does the market do? It creates kind of a consolidation. There is your little manipulation down, and then we have a push outside that also broke structure. All rules are ticked. So where is your uh, zone right now? Well, it's this whole zone. It's this whole area. We of course have um, have strategies to make it as as kind of as little as possible. Let me do this. Just bring this on top. But yes, basically there is your entry. Okay. What does the market do after you get the entry? So you're already long right there. What does it do? It creates a consolidation, manipulates down, it creates another range, and then pushes outside and breaks structure. Is this a valid demand? Yes, it is. There is your other entry. How does it create that entry? We have a consolidation. We push into this consolidation period and then we exit outside. Okay. Is this a demand? Yes, it is. There is your third entry. So we have one entry, second entry, third entry, just in the matter of minutes right there. And this is just simply following actually the one minute supply and demand. What happens later? Let's examine. As I told you, it's all the same. What do we have? We have a consolidation. We have a push outside of the consolidation, and then a massive pump. Look, I told you what is one of the rules, a strong push outside and a break of structure. There's your break of structure. There's your also break of major swing. OK, so is this whole zone valid? Oh, yes, it is. I'm going to long this every day. OK, and as you can see, the market, how does it get inside with the same pattern? We have an overall consolidation. We drop below to manipulate. Then we push up. We didn't break structure. We grab some more orders and then we break structure. OK. So there is your entry again long. Where is your new demand area? It's this one. There is your last sell to buy. Can you trade this? Absolutely yes. And there is your fifth entry, I think. So we have one, two, three, four, five entries already. Let's follow up. What happens later? The market creates this consolidation and strongly exits. Okay. So where do we want to enter? We want to enter from here. Okay. But the market does not provide us with an entry. But what it does, of course, we just keep following the market. It creates another consolidation and pushes outside and also breaks the structure. So what I do is I set my order at this range, sixth entry right there, right? And then we simply continue to go higher. And if I go also on the 15 seconds, what you're going to see is small ranges, push outside, pull back, range, push outside, pull back, range, push outside, pull back. So there are all of those long entries to the upside. Okay. But of course, there comes a point that the market taps into a supply on the left. So if I go on the left right now, okay, I'm not going to do that because it's going to take too much time. The market taps into something. And what we see, guys, is we see uh, demand change to supply. And how do you spot this? Simply by the market breaking market structure. Okay. So basically, there's our high low. There's our high high. The market pulls back. Cool. The market then fails to make a new high high, creates a double bottom. Cool. We're still long, then fails to make a high high again. And then we broke to the downside. 
okay? And so basically after this moment, you start looking for shorts, but this is already at the end of the day and it wasn't that clear, but of course there is your whole range, this whole sell to buy, there is your pullback, and then just the market continues to go lower and lower and lower. Okay, spot what happens right here as well. This is something that I'm currently looking at. We have a consolidation, there is the manipulation, there is the break of structure. We pulled back, but we created another range and then a massive pump to the downside that this is actually the move that broke structure. So for me, this whole zone right now is something that I'm gonna be looking at for the market to come inside today at the, at the moment of this video and to react. And as you can see, we kind of already reacted from it, but I would have loved to actually see it go deeper. Okay, let me show you one last time what I looked at today. So basically there is your whole range. This is, of course, what I would also love for you to do is to learn how to trade, like the how to read the higher time frames on the lower ones. Because what this is right there, guys, is a big consolidation on the five minute. There is your manipulation below and there is your break of structure. So basically this whole thing is a demand level, right? And what happens later is you just continue following. What happens? is we have a range, the market initiates outside, so there is my entry, but I missed this one, I didn't take this one. Then what do we have? Uh, yeah, another push, another pullback, another push, another pullback, and as you can see, the market just keeps going. Now, what are we having right now is the market actually reversing. Why? Because we have a consolidation, the market pumps outside and strongly reverses down, also breaking structure. So right now, I would have loved to actually take a sell from this area in order for the market to go down, okay? So this is actually it, okay? And if you want to see it clearly on the five minute maybe, let me delete everything. There is your consolidation, there is your manipulation, there is your push outside. So currently actually, I think the market is coming from that level in order to push into the highs, potentially, all right? So this is how I actually want to wrap up this video. I really would love you to actually go onto your charts, go onto another pair on GU as well, because this works on absolutely every time frame. okay? Try to spot this, like the market consolidating, manipulating, pushing down, then zoom in and see, okay, so how do I want to draw my zone, okay? There are two ways, either take the whole range like this. Uh, I would recommend you to actually do both of those things. So take the whole range, because this is where the, actually the orders are stacked. And then take, for example, the last buy candle. And as you can see, we reacted from the range and from that last buy candle, and there is your beautiful sell. Okay. And uh, the examples are absolutely everywhere. There is also another sell right there, the last buy candle before the big sell off. And how does this happen? Well, first of all, we consolidate, we manipulate up, and then we break structure down. Okay. So this basically, this whole area is supply. The market gets inside. And if you go to the one minute right now, you can follow all the way this to the downside until it finds support and starts to uh, shift from supply to demand, all right? Go to GU, go to EU, and backtest that stuff, okay? Because it's absolutely everywhere. Range, manipulation, push to the downside. Range, manipulation, push to the downside. This got respected, this one still hasn't tapped. Another range, manipulation above, push to the downside with a break of structure. There is your entry again. Uh, another range, push out, pu first push down, break above, then we broke structure, so basically this right now is our supply. There is the entry, okay? We have a range, manipulation, a push to the downside. There is the whole supply. There is our entry right there, okay? So basically, what I want you to do right now, just to wrap up this video, is go back, rewatch the rules, and then just start applying what I did. Practice on every time frame because this happens on every time frame. Of course, the higher the time frame is, the more confluence it's gonna give you, right? But sometimes it's a little bit hard to spot. Like, because have a look at this one, for example, like we have the market stacking orders, we first pushed up, but then we manipulated down, and that's when we actually initiated the move to the upside, okay? And we also have another little range right there. So this whole zone is an area of sensitivity or just demand. And as you can see, the market comes inside and it's already starting to react. So try it out on every time frame. Look how you can actually make it to your preference. As you can see, I have a couple of rules around it. I have rules for entries. I have rules for everything. But this is what we actually show in our private community. So make sure to check that out as well. All right. So I really hope you enjoyed that video, guys. I hope it wasn't too long and I hope I provided you with enough examples. Let me know if I didn't and let me know if I was too fast or if anything was not clear so I can actually make more videos on that. All right. So let me know. Make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe and talk to you on my next video.